most of what theorists do is wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and one of the main sort of, in, in my view, most important things about a theorist is they should be willing to recognize when they've gone wrong, put themselves up to scrutiny to test uh, both mathematical and, uh, and observational. And if either fail, move on to a better theory. The main point is that observations of the universe made by people like you have revealed something incredible, which is that the universe is unbelievably simple. And by simple, I mean very economical in what it takes to describe it. You just need five numbers. Um, and so far, there's no evidence for anything more than those five numbers. Mm. Whereas when we look at our theories, they, are, they have become unbelievably complex, arcane, with a million assumptions and fixes. And starting about five years ago, I basically decided this has all become you know, a bit of a joke, to, to be honest. What we should be doing is being strongly guided by the data to constructing much simpler models of the universe. And by simpler, I don't mean uh, less precise or vaguer or, or anything like that. I mean that basically we, the evidence is we've been missing something. And once I made this switch, as I said about five years ago, I said, look, I'm just not willing to build these arcane models anymore. Mm. I'm going to be ruthlessly self-critical, meaning that I'm not willing to introduce even one extra field into the standard model. Standard model is basically a well-verified well picture of what we know about physics. I'm not going. I'm going to be extremely reluctant even to introduce one new ingredient. By that assumption, I'm just ruling out all the models that have been developed in the forty in the last forty years. Everybody's been introducing extra fields, extra particles, extra dimensions. You know, and what did we end up with? We ended up with the multiverse, which is the least predictive theory ever <laughs> okay most predictive <laughs> well it predicts yeah it predicts the most but it's it's the it's the least testable let's say mm -hmm. whereas the evidence both on the very large scale and on the very sc small scale has gone in the opposite direction so the large hadron collider you know the great greatest experiment ever built discovered the higgs boson and absolutely nothing else <laughs> okay so most theorists like me, 99% of theorists are extremely disappointed at that result. Oh my God, everything we've done for the last 40 years has led to nothing. There's just no extra particle to be found. And uh, I'm exactly the opposite. What my interpretation is that nature is, has been smarter than we have been. And nature figured out how to get away with just having the bare minimum. You know, the Higgs boson, which is necessary to make uh, standard physics work, and no more. On the tiniest scale, we have this surprising economy in the laws of physics. On the larger scale, it's the same thing. The Planck satellite, uh, subsequent experiments, uh, your uh, forthcoming very exciting experiment with the Simons Observatory. You know, so far, these have re revealed nothing new. That's not bad. That's, that's a huge challenge for fundamental physics. It says to us, maybe we're working on, on you know, a questionable set of assumptions. Maybe there are principles, very economical, very powerful principles, which we haven't yet figured out, which will resolve the paradoxes we have, such as the dark matter, the dark energy, the Big Bang itself, uh, what goes on in black holes, you know, they're, they're very, very basic paradoxes. Mm -hmm. And maybe we just need to think a little harder. After I've started following this line of research about five years ago, it's very difficult because you've essentially tied your hands together. I'm not allowed to introduce a new particle, okay? <laughs> and, but we've made amazing progress. At least I find it amazing. We've realized what the dark matter is. It's probably a right-handed neutrino, which is already there in the standard model. It's extremely economical explanation. We've found, this is something I'm most excited about recently, 
a new explanation for why the universe is so simple on large scales. You know, the, the geometry of the universe. What is the universe like on large scale? Well, in first approximation, it's flat space. It's the thing you learn about in geometry in primary school. You know, there's X, Y, and Z. There's no curve curvature at all. Why is it the simplest possible geometry? It's a huge puzzle, which motivated the theory of inflation. Mm -hmm. So now we have a new explanation. And the explanation is extremely economical. It, it doesn't make it easy to understand, but it basically developed Stephen Hawking's ideas about black holes. And we, we literally do a calculation of the thermodynamics of the universe, uh, which I'll, I'll say uh, it, it, it very briefly, shows that you know just like the gas in a room will distribute itself evenly in space, because that is the most probable configuration of the atoms. If you chuck them in with some energy, allow them to randomize, they will spread themselves out uniformly in a smooth distribution. You don't have to introduce somebody to smooth that or do something active, another field or particle. It just does it itself. That's thermodynamics. Mm -hmm. And so we figured out the thermodynamics of the cosmos using Hawking's insights and with no finagling new particles or whatever, with some very simple mathematical assumptions, we find the most probable universe is flat. Hmm. Uh, exactly the geometry uh, we see, and it's the simplest geometry. And so that's an entirely new explanation. It doesn't require uh, any new ingredients. Uh, it will take people a long time to accept this. Uh, well aware of that because people have built their careers for 40 years on, uh, <laughs> on differing, different assumptions. But I'm personally very excited about it. I yeah. think what we're seeing is a way through to explain all the puzzles, all the major puzzles in theoretical physics with absolutely minimal additions mm. to what we already know.